You're having fun? That's fine, fine, fine. Anything you want, you just ask for Smacksy Gold. The Golden Goose is yours. Hey, boss. Now, don't call me boss, will you? It ain't democratic. Call me Mr. Gold. Yes, boy, I need Mr. Gold. Say, hey, look, ain't there somebody out there wearing a khaki? Excuse me, boy. Excuse me, too. Number seven. Hello, Frankie. How are you? Uh, my partner. Ciao. Delighted, I'm sure. In the South Pacific, I thought you would. Back this morning. On leave? No, I might have to take a medical discharge. What's the matter? Who left the poison? Is that Kenshin? Oh, go away, squirrel. Will you go outside and see how dark? Excuse me. Excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> you remember the squirrel, my bodyguard? Not that I need a bodyguard, but for a guy in my position, how would it look? Help. Come on, I'll find you too. Hey, wait a minute. Can't you see this table is reserved for a personal friend? For my friend, the ace here, your friend, can give up this table. Go on, take your friend away. He called me up personal. Boys, boys. Come on, Rod. He's always doing this. Yes. Mr. Talbot? They seem quite put out. Oh, that's just Rodney and Winston. Come to my partner. The business looks good. This out here, this is just a byproduct. The real dough is back in a game room. Uh, by the way, Mr. Talbot, maybe you would like to take a little flyer in roulette, craps, blackjack. Not tonight, Golden. Well, maybe there's something else I can do. Yeah, it's Maxon. Ken Graham's wife works here. I, uh, I dropped in to see her. Oh, you're acquainted with Elaine? No, he met her after I shipped out. They were married almost immediately. Say, by the way, just what happened to Ken? That is, if it's not a military secret. No. Got a raid over the ball. Jap Zero got on our tail, machine gun this. Got Ken back to base, but he only lasted a couple of days. That's tough luck. I'm awful sorry. I was luckier. Excuse me, one of my partners. Trouble back in the game room. Well, it's a penalty for being an entrepreneur. Let's get her out. Ken Graham. So he got killed and left us all alone with his IOU. Didn't you hear me say I was sorry? Tell me, Ken. Just what is your interest in Elaine Graham? What do you mean? Well, she's the widow of your best friend. You might think you owe her something for his sake. Well, I mean, do whatever I could. You don't owe her a thing. You're the one for me Just as every fish has a lovely dish That he swims with in the sea You're the one for me You're the one for me Just as every bat with his blind and bat Has a bat that he can see You're the one for me Nightingales or black to fast scales ramble. Chickadees get weak in the knees and so So it's plain to see Just as every moose who is on the loose Finds his ammo all at sea You're the one for 
few weeks before he left, and owning some of the best timberland in the country didn't hurt him any with her. Camels blink and run for the drink when long goes by. Eastland shall get comfort and so do I. So it plays a scene, just as every goat makes a mantle and open its bars, his dreams all be. Why don't you take a rain check and leave now? No, I promised Ken I'd see it. Even shrimp are bound to get limp where love goes by. Unicorns would toot their own hoods and so will I. So it's plain to see. Dragon spouted fire for their heart's desire, and I do the same for thee. You're the one. Oh, baby, why don't you come up to the office and we're visit? Not me, Maxie. I'm getting an athlete's heart from running around that desk. Oh, baby, that ain't no way to talk. Here goes a nice boy. Yeah. Well, the head waiter told me to come in. Oh, he did. Does this go with the two dollar dinner? I don't understand. Look, Captain, go dig yourself a new foxhole. This one's private. Well, I'm sorry. My name is Russ Evans. Russ Evans? Yes. Well, why didn't you say so? You didn't give me a chance. Well, Lily, you remember Russ Evans, Ken's friend? Sure, the guy he was weaned up with, a hop along the big squaws. It's quiet. Yeah, oh. just a down. Yeah, yeah, let's all sit down. Okay. Oh, well, why don't you go hustle up a drink, huh? You know, that's what keeps me so fast. Go hustle up a drink. Go get the bottle. Go get this. Go. <laughs> you were with Ken when he... when he died, weren't you? Yes, I was. He asked me to give you a message. He told me to tell you that he was sorry. Sorry for what? He seemed to think that he had failed you in some way. By not coming back, I guess. Poor kid. I didn't know that you'd been back here to work. Oh, well, I had to do something after he left. You, uh, you didn't know Ken very long before you married him, did you? About two weeks. Two weeks. What do you mean, before I married him? You mean I married him what I could get out of it? I didn't say that. But that's what you meant, so why didn't you say it? Go on, say it. Well, I I told Ken I'd come and see him. Thanks. Goodbye. Uh-uh. No, you don't. Who does he think he is coming in here passing judgment? Oh, please, Lil. Listen, you. All she ever got out of Ken Graham was two of the happiest weeks a girl ever had, see? Yeah? Yeah. And a mortgage big enough to choke a cow. What happened to his timber holding? Who got those? That's where the mortgage comes in. He borrowed $30,000 on those timber holdings, and then he proceeded to scatter his dough in every joint in town till he broke. And furthermore, it was after he lost his dough that she married him. Not before, Mr. Evans. Mr. Evans? Hey, your name is Evans? Yeah. Oh, well. <laughs> the Scrooge who pulled that fast one on Ken and tied up his land for a tenth of what it was worth? That was your partner, Mr. Harold Talbot. Is this on the level? Oh, now I suppose you're going to say this is all news to you. Well, I didn't know I... Uh... Okay, Bob. Out. The exterminators are waiting for you. Well, I... Yeah, and if you happen to break anything on the way out, be sure it's your neck. Ready to go? Sit down. Let me go in there and make a chump out of myself. I did. Why don't you tell me you tied up Ken's land? We did. Talbot and Evans Incorporated. I had your power of attorney. Now, you let me take care of the business, and you take care of your fine. So you made me a partner in an underhanded trick. Now, don't get excited. Ken wanted the money in a hurry, and we made a smart deal. 
In 60 days, we foreclose on the track and start cutting timber. Well, get this. I don't want any part of it. Ken was my friend. His widow's going to get every nickel that land is worth. You can't do a thing without my consent. I can pay her myself, can I? I can sell my share in Talbot and Evans. Our contract happens to prevent that without a full year's notice. I don't know how my father ever got tied up with a rat like you. You can see me tomorrow when you cool off. Oh, no, we can settle this right now. Get out of my... Hey, look, a fight! All right, folks, take it easy. Just a little misunderstanding. Sit down, sit down. Let's have some music. I'm sorry I couldn't let you bust them up a little more, kid, but after all, I'm running a class joint here. I just can't allow it. What's the matter? What is it all about? I see that's what you call breaking up a partnership. See you later, folks. Boy, I'll, I'll take care of it. Hey, Joe. Wait a minute. Uh-oh. Elaine. Dracula's in again. I thought we finished last night. First of all, I want to apologize for making a chump out of myself. Well, now, ain't that sweet? Well, if you'll only listen, I can tell you how to get your property back and put it on a paying basis. Go ahead and talk. Well, I didn't know what Ken's deal was, and when I found out my partner chipped him, why, we had a row. Well... Maybe we better hear some more, huh? Come on in. Sit down. See, Talbot and Evans had a contract to buy all the logs that Ken could cut and deliver. Now, here's my plan. We can cut $30,000 worth of logs in 60 days. That would get your property back. Get out your nail file, darling. We're going to start cutting timber. You're exactly right. We've got to have $10,000 for labor and equipment before we can start. Oh, only $10,000? Well, I thought maybe between the three of us, we we could dig up $10,000. You know, it's funny, but I haven't met a millionaire all day. Now, wait a minute, honey. That ain't the right attitude. Let's, let's think this thing over. Uh, who do we know with $10,000? Whom? Yeah, whom? Whom do we know with 10000 bucks? Okay. So here's the IOU. So what? Kenneth Graham. Kenneth Graham. Kenneth Graham. Kenneth Green, $9,000 worth. $10,000 worth. Mr. Russ Evans came in a while ago. If he was such a pal of Ken's, why wouldn't he want to pay off and clear his pal's name? That uh, Talbot and Evans outfit's plenty healed. Will uh, Evans pay for his pal? Oh, I can't ask him to do that. The guy's dead. That kind heart of yours talking again? Listen, I got sensibility. That sense of who's that he's yours will run us into the ground. Now, look, you let this guy get into us for 10 grand. Now, you'll ask his pal for the payoff. Or else. Look, or else. Okay, okay, you don't have to blast. Trouble with you, Rodney, is you take too many vitamin pills. He's in there right now. You'll go in there, and you'll ask for the dough. All right, I'll ask him. Don't push, don't push. Look, boys, don't rush me, don't rush me. I cannot get my best results if I am rushed. No, it's no good. We just don't know anybody with that kind of money. Oh, wait a minute. There's Jack Percy. No. Is Everett Jerome? Oh, no. You had to go and slap his face. There's got to be somebody. Smexy ought to know. Hey, what about Smexy? Well, what about him? Ah, oh, no. This is too legitimate. He likes to gamble. Well, if I know Talbot, there'd be a gamble in it. Well, listen, there's no harm in asking, Smaxy, anyway, huh? <laughs> Nothing ventured? Nothing ventured. Oh. And don't forget what we told you. Look, not another way. I know just how to handle this situation. Oh, I, I was just coming looking for you folks. <laughs> we were looking for you, too. <laughs> yeah, well, uh, what I wanted to see you about had something to do with uh, Ken Grant. This has too. <laughs> well, then it's probably the same thing. <laughs> Come on, step right in the office, folks. We'll talk it over. Come on in. Make yourselves at home. 
Squirrel, send for some drinks, my friend. Sit down, sit down, sit down. Um, now about the, um, the business. Yeah, about the ten grand. How'd you know? Oh, I am psychical. Besides, I got the IOUs right here. IOUs? Yeah, Ken Graham. That's what you came to see me about, wasn't it? To pay me the ten grand? Well, we came to see about the ten grand, all right. And yeah. we came to see about Ken, all right. Yeah. But uh, we didn't come to give you the ten grand. We came to borrow. Yeah, you can. No! No, it's squirrel. Get the refreshments and be right up. No, never mind the refreshments. Lock the door, will you? Oh, Lock the door. Honey, what's oh. the matter? It's, uh, see, it's just my partner. They might upset him. Oh. <laughs> now, what was this about 10 grand? What do you see? Uh, uh, let me explain it to him, huh? He's a double fisted gent with a single track mind. It's like sticking your hand in your pocket and finding 10 grand you never do your head. Don't start buying mink shorts. We ain't got it yet. That's right. We won't. Smacksy have got it. So you see, Smacksy, you have it. I have it. Yeah, you could save the whole thing for Elaine and be making yourself a couple of bucks, too. I can't do it. Why not? Business is romping. Or ain't it? I got to unmask myself. I have been living a lie. Maxie, you ain't gonna tell me you got a wife and ten kids snatched away in some safety by the box. It's worse than that, it's worse. You know, I've been making out like I'm the head man around here. Well, I ain't. You're not? No, it's my partners. Oh, I got a small percentage. They put me up in front because I look good in this suit, because I got class. And you haven't any money. No. I would have. The gambling room has been going good, but frankly, golden eggs, the golden goose ain't been laying. Just eggs. The boss, what about the ten grand in the same? Smacksy! You got ten grand in the same, honey? Now, wait a minute. Listen, folks, it ain't mine. That's bank-breaking dough. Bank-breaking dough? Yeah, in case some sucker gets hot out there in the gambling room, I gotta have that cash on hand to keep the game going. But, Smacksy, that ain't happened yet. No? Well, beauty, what are we waiting for? You had to open your big mouth. I can't do it. Why not? I can't take the chance. So you're a great guy in a tuxedo, and you've got class. You say. But when it comes to being a gambler, you couldn't bet your way out of a nylon stocking. Baby, you don't understand. What's there to understand? Here's a proposition that's right down a gambling man's alley. There isn't one chance in a thousand that you'll ever use that ten grand in the safe, is there? No. All right, you want to get back your partner's money for Kent's IOUs? I got it. All right, then. Lend us the money. We deliver the timber, pay off the mortgage, pay you back the ten grand and the IOUs. And everything we give you on top of that is just so much better. Okay, I'll do it. Sexy baby oh, angel oh, cry. Oh, oh, Where's the baby? Right over here. Come on. What's coming? Don't rush me. Don't rush me. Everybody rushes me. But, boss, supposing some sucker busts the bank and the partner starts asking for the bank breaking money. In that case, my golden goose is cooked. Must seem sort of funny to you, Russ. What do you mean? Out of this frying out of Uruguay. Oh, I should hope to tell you. Hey, do you think Talbot would give us any trouble? Man? He was sore as a boy when Ross and I told him we were quitting to go with you. Maybe you should have stayed with him, Joe. Can't guarantee how this thing's going to turn out. Listen, your old man gave me a start before I ever heard of Talbot. How about you, Russ? Here we go. Time, Torres. Sure does. Where's Milton Barney? Oh, they're probably around someplace. Well, they're inside washing up before. Milt, hey, Bob, look who's here. Oh, yo, Banshee. How you feel? Good enough for this. Got my medical discharge from the army yesterday. Hi, Russ. It's good to see you. Hiya, Barney. Anymore, that blub in the trees won't be able to hold you. Come on, he's still the number one tree topper in this neck of the woods. You got Talbot chewing his nails. First, you grab off his best tree topper, then his best woods boss and Rawson and me. Swell, engineers are scarce. Dave, you taking a look at the equipment? I hope you're not figuring on using that logging engine. It's beyond revival. 
Oh, that's bad. How are you going to move your logs? Well, I got 17 men coming up besides the girl. Girls? Yeah, I thought they would get you. Look, you and Ross can go on down and meet the train. You come back with the men, and Ross will bring the girls back in your car. You got that a little twisted, haven't you, Bob? I'll bring the girls. All right, have it your own way. <laughs> half interest in Talbot and Evans, and if this deal works, he gets half of Ken's loan back, and if it doesn't work, he gets half your property. <laughs> he wins no matter how you figure it out. But, no, he didn't have to do anything. Yeah, I know. That's the only thing. Oh, he's got an angle there somewhere. Hey, maybe it's you. Oh, now, don't be funny. Uh, I don't know. You don't know men, right? I do, I do. When you reach my girdle, climb any higher, it's going to choke me. Oh, thanks. This is a terrible road, isn't it? There must be some other way to arrange this. Could be. Hey, look, we're back on land. Oh, that's mighty thoughtful of you. <laughs> I... You get the front, Molly. Did you say you were born in San Francisco? No, I didn't. Oh. But it was. Really? Mm -hmm. Now, that doesn't seem possible. Oh, now I'm supposed to say, why not? And then you say, well, because I've been there all my life. And if you'd been there too, surely I'd have met you before this. That's just what I was going to say. It's been used before, but it's still a good line. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's going to be fun working with you. I'd much rather travel this way than by car. Hello? Who? Virgil? Put him on. Hello, Joe. You shouldn't take a chance calling from up there. It's all right. Russ and Barney have gone out to check the equipment. He's working shorthanded. Seventeen and all. Only seventeen men. Well, he hasn't got much of a crew. Just play along for the time being. Without a rocket engine, he'll have enough trouble with us making it. Hey, wait a minute. Somebody's coming. I'll talk to you later. Here we are. Are you all right, Lou? Oh, great. Hello there. Hello. Got them here safe and sound. Speak for yourself, John. Oh, Lil, it's beautiful. Well, it's all yours. I hope so. It's going to be a hard pull, but I think we'll lick it. Get this luggage out of here. I'll take these. Thanks an awful lot. As usual, holding the bag. Oh, here, I'll take them. And thanks a lot, the room's swell. Lady, will you come and help me? All right, Lil. You got something mighty nice in that lane. Well, I'm just protecting your interests for Ken's sake. Sure, sure. I just thought that. Well, then, as far as you're concerned, the field's wide open. Huh? Oh, sure. Well, that's good to know. Don't let that take your mind off your work. I will. Now, here's the layout for the skyline right here. I've spotted the head spot tree right there. Now, all these others are 250 footers. We can use them for the tail spars. Yeah. All within the radius of 2,000 feet. Wouldn't be better if I'd planted myself. Barney, you start topping at 6 in the morning. 6 o'clock, I'll be there. All right, that's fine. But what do we use for a logging train? What's the matter with the old flume? That's what we use for years. Shot. We can repair it and shoot the logs down into Graham's Creek and then down the river to Talbot's Mill. 
Oh, that's impossible. There's a saying in the Air Corps, the difficult we do immediately. The impossible takes a little longer. up there, Barney. Get the phone on the phone, will you? I'll be a little too busy for that, Milt. No. You didn't feel like dancing. I do now. I have to take a look at these fingers. Take a look, Elaine. We keep going at this rate. We'll have enough logs down the river in four weeks to pay Talbot back. Oh, Russ. I really owe you an apology. What for? Oh, for any doubts I may have had. Oh, forget it. I owe you an apology. I had you tabbed all wrong. Look, are you two going to let all this good music go to waste? I'll say we're not. Why don't you go read a good book, huh? Okay. I give up. Temporarily. No wonder they couldn't find a place. Ain't no numbers on these streets. Sure, but you're out in the country now. Oh. It's not that fresh air. Mm. Hey, you guys. It'll be 37 bucks. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, I'll tell you what you do. Here, you call it. Double or nothing. 37 bucks. Well, double or nothing. It'll make it 74 bucks. What do you think I am, chump? A chump? Oh, no sporting blood, eh? Okay. Hey, Russ! Russ Evans! Come on, Edward. I remember Peter smacks him. Now, what drove him out in the fresh air? How'd you get here? Oh, it's Maxie took a taxi. Look, I'll tell you all about it later, kid, but first pay this bad sport here, 37 fish. Yeah, yeah sure. There you are. There. Plus uh, 50 cents, making a total of 37.50, for which go buy yourself a war bottle. Thanks, Hal. <laughs> and don't cash it in. Well, kids, I'm glad to be here. Yeah, well, I think we can have a little fun up here, didn't we? Thanks, Mr. Maxie. Yep. I think I'm going to like it here. Maxie, what happened? 
Well, uh, you remember the ten grand I had in the safe, the bank breaking dough in case the sucker got lucky? Well? Well, the sucker got lucky. And, and oh. the partners are out looking for us. Yeah, so I well, didn't stick around and discuss the matter with them. Uh, we took a little taxi ride. Yeah, you see, we knew a fellow who disgusted it once, and it was his last disgust. Ain't you got no tax? Oh, sure. Well, we figured we'd come up here, you see. In the first place, it could serve as a hideout, and in the second place, I can protect my investment. Maybe pay the dough back, and then all is forgiven. You can bet on it. Well, how do you like it up here, sugar puss? Oh, Maxie, it's just wonderful. Ain't it beautiful? Look at the forest. Forest? I don't see nothing but trees. Ah, uh, it's a great thing, this exercise. Give you an appetite, eh? Good, Chase Paul. Yeah. Hey, Smaxie. What? What's that? Squirrel. What? What, what? I don't want nothing you do. So what are you calling me for? All I want to know is, what is D-H-A-T? Squirrel. What do you want? Look. You asked me, what is that? Yeah. That is a squirrel. Smitty, you don't see no resemblance? That's the trouble. At this rate, they'll have enough timber out in three weeks to put that girl in the clear. What do you want me to do? You've got to do something. Smash some equipment. Stop them. He keeps a guard up there on the track and on the phone. Wait a minute. That night watchman he has up on the skyline. He's a sucker for the bottle. Now you're talking. With the skyline down, they'd be in a pretty bad spot. Yeah. <sighs> What's the matter? Tired? Mm -mm. Just the moonlight on the treetops. Oh, I told you to do that, T. I feel sort of guilty, though. Gus hasn't been back in weeks. He didn't have to go to boy for supplies. He just wanted to give us a break, honey. Now, you promised that you'd behave. Say, where is this place you were talking to me about where you can see all the lights? I'll bet there isn't any. Oh, yes, there is. Just keep going. <laughs> Matter. Sure, I heard something. Hmm. Oh, it's him. He's dead to the world. Okay, let's go. Hey, listen to that. Lexi, what's that? It's a bird. Huh. Fifteen years in show business, and I never heard a bird like that one. <laughs> It's a mockingbird. Gee, listen to him, huh? Yeah. Springtime. He's calling to his mate. Can you hear her? She answered him. It's a love call. Now, ain't that pretty? Ah, oh, Maxie, the smell of the trees in the forest. It does something to me. Yeah. It does something to me, too. You know? It does something to me, too. It makes me... It makes you want to sneeze.
magazine. Did you ever think? Everybody in show business always dreams about having a little house in the country and raising chickens. Yeah. No, no. When I was a kid, I used to raise chickens. You did, Maxie? Yeah. In a box hanging out of the window on the sixth floor, right next to the clothesline. Gee. Hey, squirrel. Ain't you sleepy? Oh, no, Stacy. I ain't sleepy. Yeah, not. You know, love, if I get out of this, I think I'd like to live in a country and raise chickens. You know, like Maxie? Yeah. Would you, love? And leave this world of strife behind. Oh, Smexy, you're so poetic. Hey, uh, squirrel. Are you sure you ain't sleepy? Oh, no, Smexy, I ain't sleepy. Squirrel. From now on, you better stop baking coffee. Oh, yes, ma'am. I'm going to make cocoa from now on. <laughs> What's that? It ain't the 4th of July. You better see what it is. Yeah. Look, it's Russ. Did you hear that crash? Yeah, I was on my way home. Come on. What is it? Oh, somebody smashed the skyline, cut down the head spar. What do we do now? Pick up the marbles? Pick up the marbles? Get Barney and Bursdale and tell them to meet me at the cottage. Where's Mel? Huh? Taking a walk with Elaine. Said something about Angel's Peak. Angel's Peak? Boy, oh boy, he's mad, ain't he? Something funny about this. What? Him getting here so fast. He's supposed to be in Sequoia. I ain't got too early, that's all. I don't know. Nine, ten, eleven, twelve. All I see are lights of twelve pounds. Maybe the thirteen percent in the blackout. <laughs> Soon. I wondered what you were doing. Like it? Quite a trick. Oh, I'm full of them. Put your chin in there, I'll show you something different. Close your eyes. Now, Mill. Aren't you ashamed? Oh, it's the moonlight. It makes me do things. Hey, you were supposed to be making the rounds tonight, weren't you? I know it. Russ, give me a little time, will you? What's the matter, Russ? Is something wrong? Not a thing. The skyline's down, that's all. The skyline's down? Like matchsticks. Okay, I know I should have been there. Go ahead and fire me. If I didn't need you, I would. Well, I guess that washes the whole thing up, doesn't it, Russ? Not on your life, it doesn't. It'll take a few days to rig a new skyline. In the meantime, we can be felling trees until the new skyline is finished. But, Russ, we haven't got enough days left. All right, then we'll work nights. If you can keep your mind on your job. Come on, we'll help Barney find a spot for a new skyline. Oh, okay. Here you are, Barney. Thanks. Up you go. Are you still interested in those Angels' phone numbers, Mill? Sure, I'll have a change. I'll see if I can get this up. Thanks. See if you can't make this a record climb. You betcha, Russ. At it.
Russ! Run up after him. Hurry, it's all my fault. Never mind, get the stuff. Look, Maxie, that's Barney. This bar is cracked. He'll be crushed. Oh, no. Let me do it, Russ. Let me do it. Never mind. Go get the first aid. Slip and they both come down. We help in some way. I wish we could. Get me down. Get me down, Ross. Ready to go for the doctor. Aren't you men working? We're through. An accident like that can happen any time to a tree topper. It's got nothing to do with the job. We're quitting anyway. We're not taking a chance on getting what Barney got. Go on, get back to your jobs. We don't have to work with a lot of junky equipment. We can get a good job. Come on, fellas. Wait a minute. You put him up to this, you're working for Talbot. I ain't working for nobody. This job is no good, that's all. Nice going, Ross. Get out of here, you weasel. Afraid we're through, Joe. No, I wouldn't say that, Russ. I'll see what I can do. Better go get the doctor. It's no use, Russ. He can't do Barney any good now. Lane. Something wrong here. What are you talking about? Well, look, I don't like to be a calamity holler, but I got a hunch your boyfriend's putting on one terrific act. I don't get you. I know this isn't the right time to talk about it, honey, but this whole thing could be phony, you know. He could be just waiting for us to go bust, and then he'd collect his half. That's as rotten a thing as you could possibly say with him making himself sick trying to help me. Yeah, but listen, honey. I don't want to listen to any more of your nasty suspicions. Just don't talk to me about it anymore. Okay, honey. You've fallen for the guy. Gosh, Russ, I'd have cut off my left arm for Barney. Oh, forget it, Mill. Nothing you can do now. Get to figure some way out of this. Well, you and I could build another skyline, but with only nine lumberjacks left. Oh, it's impossible. To get the men we've got now, we had to comb every agency and spot you can think of. It's no use. Well, Lil and I can always go back to town and get some sort of a job. 
Oh, I wanted to make a go of this thing so it'd make it easy for you and Milt. Me and Milt? Well, that's how it is, isn't it? Oh, no. Gee, the other night, I, I couldn't help but see you. Oh, no, that was just Milt's idea of a gang. Little boy stuff. <laughs> I thought... Do you ever think of marrying again? No, I haven't. Kind of can't? No. Why? I don't know. I just never thought about it. You better start thinking about it now. I am thinking about it. You big dumb dumb. I'm going to bed. You and your big ideas. Me? What big ideas? Well, why don't you have one? Gee, I ain't no Einstein. Wish I could get a flash for those kids. You know, this affects you as much as it does them. Me? How's that? Well, if you don't get your dough back, you won't be able to show your face anywhere in town. You may as well join the Foreign Legion. Can I go too, Smaxie? Oh, boy, if the partners ever got their hands on me, they... Hey, wait a minute. What is it? Well, oh, no, I wouldn't wake up. Now, just a minute. What is it? Well, I just had a screwy idea that I sent the squirrel into town to let the partners know where I was hiding out. Oh, it's a pipe. Hey, a few minutes ago, you were saying you'd do anything. Now, you got a swell idea, and you don't like it. Now, listen here, Smaxie. You want to raise chickens with me, or don't you? If you put it that way, I guess I gotta. Okay, Squirrel, you gotta go into town. Look. Oh, Smack, see, I don't wanna go in there. I like it up here. Come on, get out of there. Get out of there. You stand get up. This may be a prank. Oh, good afternoon, boys. Don't give us any of that. Oh, we can take it easy, fellas. I'm very glad to see you, gentlemen. All right, get in the car. We're Come taking you car. for a break. Oh, look, oh, boys, that stuff went out with the button shoes. Yeah, but we ain't caught up yet. Get in the car. Maybe I didn't have such a good idea here. What are you talking about? You fellas seem to think that you've been looking for me. Well, you didn't, because I said for you. Well, yeah. thank you very much. Oh, you still don't get it, eh? Look, do you just want to have the pleasure of taking me for a ride, bumping me off, or would you rather do something? which will get you all your dough back and at the same time make you a hero which all the kids will remember in their history books. Hey, maybe that is a nut house. Well, let's uh, find out. Come on, come on. Get in there. You boys have all been beefing about how you'd like to do something to help the war effort, right? Can I give my blood? Don't I try to join the Marine? So what do they do? Turn me down just on account of a little record. Yeah, exclusive they are. All on account of three little terms in Joliet. That's right. And you, q boy, you got a kid in the Navy, eh? Yeah. And Rodney, you almost made it, didn't you? They found out about your bad ticker? It stole on me. It had to skip a beat just when the Sawbones was listening in. There you are. Now, I know that you gentlemen are all patriotic citizens. Well, here is a chance for you all to be heroes. Still get your dough back. How? By string along Venus' proposition like I told you. By enlisting in the great fight to provide wood for the war effort. It's essential. What do you think they use lumber for? Toothpicks? Uh, toothpicks. Toothpicks, you dope. What do you think they make those barracks out of? They keep the poison and the ships and the airplanes. What? Wood, wood, wood. What else? Now, boys, you know what we need, don't you? We need a lot of good, strong guys, and we need them in a hurry. And if there is any guy that can round up guys in a hurry, it is you guys. Leave it to us, Maxie. We'll get them. Now, wait a minute. You know what we need? Sure. Four Fs with muscles.
I'm very good at this sort of thing. Oh, boy, this is something. Wait, I got to show this to Russ. Hey, Russ. Hey, how many eggs do you think a chicken will lay in one year? Ask some other chicken. I'm busy. Uh-oh. We better go ask some other chickens, Maxie. Where are we going to find a chicken at this time of night? <laughs> On the day of tomorrow, they'll have enough logs boomed up in Graham Creek and up that river to beat you four ways from Sunday. They can't float logs down the river without water. What do you mean? You've got plenty of water. You give up too easily. That spot's on our property, isn't it? You mean the Narrows, eh? Yeah. Well, sure, I helped you to buy it. What would happen if the steep sides of that narrow stream caved in accidentally? Well, dam up the river. Let me show you something. River plus dam on our property equals river minus water on Graham's property. Yes. Yeah, I see what you mean. What was that? I guess Russ dynamited the boom and let the logs down the river. He wouldn't do that without the rest of us being there. I guess not. We better find him and Virgil. Those explosions came from up the river. Yeah, let's go. I better get over the skyline. You get off the track as fast as you can. Uh, looks like Talbot's got your lick, Russ. Yeah, one day. One more little day we'd have won a match. Well, uh, that's that. Nobody will float any logs down that river. How much dynamite have we got? Not enough to crack that dam, if that's what you're thinking. Look, you and Milt take all the dynamite we got and plant it down that boom. Ready to have the logs get down the river when I get back. Where are you going? To town? What for? Beat Talbot, I hope. I gotta have some help. Uh, hey, you squirrel, you go with me. In a plane? Yeah. What's the matter, Squirrel? You afraid? Who, oh, me? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hello, you. Hi. Oh, hello. You taking the day off? You take it on the chin? What's the matter? She jill it again? Not as bad as all that. Talbot's got the river dammed up and all the logs are jammed. Oh, Russ, what are you going to do? I'm flying to town. Come on, get it up. They haven't got us down yet. Albert paid you to do it, didn't he? No. Sing, Wessel. What's going on out here? Cut it out. Oh, Wessel caught this guy sneaking through the woods. He's the skunk that damned the river. There's no doubt about it. Are you going to talk or aren't you? Are you going to talk or do I have to give you a going over? Come on, Rawson. Who put you up to it? Come on, spill it. You guys can go on being suckers for Evans if you want to. But I'm not going to take any beatings for him. Evans? Yeah, he's the guy who engineered the whole thing. That's a lot. Do you believe that? You don't believe it, do you? I don't know. I don't know what to believe. Well, I haven't got time to argue. I got a job to do. Those logs we all sweat to get in the river, they're still on this property. And they will be tomorrow when Talbot and Evans clamp down. Oh, baby, take it easy. I don't get this. Me too. Do you think that... Nah, nah. If there's any double crossing going on, the kid didn't have no part of it. Take it easy, boys. Let me figure it out. Don't I always figure a way out?
don't you ride into town with me? Maybe we can find a nice, quiet joint somewhere and have a good cry in our beer over friendship and stuff like that. No, Mel. I'm all mixed up now. I'll wait. If that's what you want. Well, this is where I get off. It's been nice knowing you. Thanks, Mel. I tell you, the guy was not putting on an act. I got intuitions about those things. That's why I'm such a good gambler. Oh, that's a laugh. Listen, if this guy doesn't come back, and he won't, what you're going to need between yourself and your partners is distance. Listen, you'll come back. Don't talk like that. The guy is true blue and a yard wide. Maxie, what makes you so sure of that guy? Uh, one mouse is just like another. As soon as the sun stops shining, you turn the other cheek. Okay, Maxie. That's the way you feel about it. Yeah, that's the way I feel about it. Well, baby. Yeah. Are we gonna make with the chickens? No. No chickens. No chickens. Well, I'm gonna put the dynamite in the boom anyway. All right. Well, Russ must have had some idea in his mind. I'm going to string along with him. Okay. You take your exercise, Faxi. I'll see you in town. I tell you, they're absolutely through. Yeah? And where did Russ go in his plane? I don't know. But you can take my word for it. There's nothing more he can do. Hey, look. Don't tell me they haven't got something up their sleeves. They're getting ready to dynamite the log jam. There's some rope on the truck. Tie these crows up. Right. Here. Nice of you to drop in on us, Mr. Talbot. Hey, maybe you change your mind about Russ now, eh? Sure, but if he had an idea from the start, why didn't he let us know about it instead of running off like that? Hey, Spikes. That's Russ now. Look. What's that underneath the plane? What is it? I don't know. I'll get the glasses. You watch these guys. It's 
dynamite. He's got it rigged up under the ship. Yeah. Homemade blockbuster. Why, if he drops that in the right spot, he'll do the trick. What a stupid sucker I made. All suckers are stupid. You stay here and take care of the boom and the water crystal. I'm going to get the girls and eat rice. What's the matter with you? I don't know. I even get dizzy when I'm standing on a thick rug. I'm circling again. Oh boy, have you ever scraped the rim of that canyon? Please, Lou. Get your cutters on the wire. When I yell, cut. Cut. Sure did it that time, Russ. Plenty of water now, huh? Good work. Lucky it wasn't yeah, right, Russ. Yeah, yeah. Oh, made it, it, Russ. Made it all Lucky up, though. Now is the proper time to push this thing down. Not with me out there. What's that? Smaxy, he broke the jam. He did? Smaxy did it! The bag. You see, you was premature. Don't on your feet. Come on. We'll get your friend. Come on. Walk. Let's go. Follow him. Check lottery, gentlemen. Hey, 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 h